Hello, I'm Emily Heron, Product Specialist with Atlas Copco, and I'm here to talk a little bit about configuring and assigning accessories on the PowerFocus platform. Today, I'll be using a PowerFocus 8 with 310.9 software, but what I'm covering still applies to other products on the platform, such as our IXB tools and tools control. In this video, I'm gonna focus on the settings that are available inside the PowerFocus platform and more general know-how. I'll be using a stack light as my hardware example, but the settings for other accessories such as an operator panel or IO expander are available in the same places in the software. If you need to learn about connecting your accessory to the controller, there are other videos available on the different ways to start that communication, wired or even wireless. For this example, I'm just using a wired connection. So let's get into the software. Once you have connectivity from the accessory to the controller, you're going to want to configure the settings and assign the accessory to a virtual station for use. Starting in the configurations menu, depending on the product on the platform you're using, you'll see a list of the possible accessories you can connect. Here, you'll create a unique configuration of behavior you want from your accessory. The PF8 has the most options, so you will see a long list. But if you're running an IXB integrated controller, for example, you won't see internal I.O. since there isn't an internal I.O. available on the IXB tools. The principles of the configurations are similar, so I'm confident that you'll get the hang of it quickly based on my example. But we do have how-to guides available for a more detailed explanation of each type of accessory and the configuration options. Please reach out to your Atlas Copco representative for copies of these guides or if you have further questions. From the menu, select which accessory you're looking to configure, in this case, a stack light. Then there is usually a default configuration available, so you can edit this one, or you can add a new one using the plus button, as is pretty standard on the platform. As always, you wanna name your configuration for organization purposes, and then we can go into the settings. When you go into the configuration, you'll see different options based on the accessory that you're using. A stack light happens to have a little bit of everything, so let's go through the list for a stack light. First, we have the lamps that are on top of the stack light, and then we have the components of the main body. Every setting is labeled with a corresponding number or letter, so it's pretty easy to know what you're configuring. In the lamps, you can add or delete spots, and then tell the controller what physical component you have in that slot, and then the behavior for that component. So here in position number four, we have a red lamp as our component, and the lamp is gonna turn on when we get a not okay tightening. Now, depending on the signal you assign to the lamp, you might open up other options, such as if the light should flash or how long it should stay on for. Moving down to the main body components, some components and accessories are static and just are what they are, and some can be changed. On a stack light, for example, E here is always a buzzer, and D and C are input and outputs, but A and B could be changed depending on your process needs. Because these components are interchangeable, from a default configuration, we do have to tell the controller which component we have actually installed. In this example, I have a push button in position B, and in position A, I have a two-way key switch. Now I can configure the behavior. So when I'm using my key switch, when I turn it to the left, I want it to increment my batch, and when I turn it to the right, I want it to decrement my batch. For the push button in position B, when I push that button, I would like for the tool to switch from clockwise to counterclockwise using toggle clockwise counterclockwise for next run as my input. Now that I've created a configuration for the stack light, I need to assign the stack light and the configuration to a virtual station. So we can go back to the main screen, over to our virtual station, and scroll down to accessories. Under choose accessories, you'll also see here a matching menu to your configuration menu which has all the available accessory types for the PowerFocus platform product that you're using. We want to select stack light. Below, you will see two puzzle pieces that can connect together. This will match the physical accessory to the configuration you need for that accessory. When we pair the configuration we just made to the stack light I have connected, the pairing will show down here in assigned accessories. Once you apply the changes, you'll see that the accessory has been grayed out up here showing that it is actually in use. This way, if you have a few connected accessories, you'll know one is already assigned and won't have any conflicts. You can connect multiple accessories to each virtual station this way, or multiple stack lights to different virtual stations with different configurations as well. Just match the two halves of the puzzle pieces together. 
once you have an accessory assigned, you'll also see it listed below here, and you can look at some basic diagnostics as well. Going to the results screen, we can just give a quick test to be sure everything is working. I'm going to flip the key on my stack light and the batch should increase. And that's it for configuring and assigning a station accessory on the PowerFocus platform. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have other questions, please reach out to your local Atlas Copco representative, and thanks for watching.